Welcome to Chemistry Revision on the Move Electron Configuration The arrangement of electrons in an atom is very important because it gives an indication of the chemical and the physical properties of the element or compound that we're considering. In terms of chemical properties, all chemistry is essentially the movement of electrons from one place to another. So where those electrons are can be very important. Of course, we use electrons, for example, in bonding in chemistry as well. So therefore, that, uh, those bonds will indicate the kind of structures and the physical properties that compounds will have. So therefore, electron configuration is uh, really one of these, again, fundamental properties that's really important to know about. Now, I'm sure you already know that electrons exist in energy levels or shells. For example, sodium, atomic number 11, 11 protons in the nucleus, and therefore 11 electrons outside the nucleus, uh, has its 11 electrons in energy levels, and the arrangement is 2, 8, 1. Two electrons in the innermost shell, then eight electrons, then one electron in the outermost energy level. But what evidence do we have for this sort of arrangement? Well, let's consider a graph of ionization energy versus number of electrons removed. Well, I say ionization energy, but look at the y-axis. Actually, it's log ionization energy. Now, we use log ionization energy because it will enable us to actually produce a scale that shows small but significant changes in ionization energies. So a tenfold increase is worth a unitary increase on the log scale. So going from 100 to 1,000 uh, kilojoules per mole, you can see, is uh, equivalent on this scale to going from 1,000 to 10,000. Now, if we were to look at this on a linear scale, the difference between the first and second ionization energies would be very, very small and insignificant, particularly con uh, con uh, compared to the ninth and tenth ionization energies. So we use this log ionization energy scale to actually clarify the arrangement of the electrons. So what we have here is our first electron, lowest ionization energy, therefore furthest away from the nucleus, and therefore it's going to be in the highest energy level. One electron in our highest energy level. Notice then we've got a jump between the first and the second ionization energy. So we're moving into a lower energy level. And then there is a general increase in ionization energy, a gradual increase in ionization energy as we pull out other electrons. Now one way of thinking about why we're getting a slight increase in ionization energies as we um, uh, pull more and more electrons out from the second to the ninth is to say, well, as you pull each electron out, there's less repulsion between the remaining electrons. So there's a greater net attraction for those electrons for the nucleus, and therefore the ionization energy increases. Finally, between 9 and 10, there's another jump, and you have the innermost electrons in the lowest energy level. 2, 8, 1. It's looking very promising. Let's now have a look at another way of considering evidence for energy levels. Here we're going to be looking at the first ionization energies for the first 20 elements. Now you'll notice that we have a periodic trend, a repeating pattern. Look at that pattern from element number 3, lithium, to element number 10, neon. And a repeating pattern, again, from element in num number 11, sodium to element number 18 argon now 3 to 10 we are moving across a period and 11 to 18 
we are moving across a period. And you will notice what's happening to the first ionization energies going across a period. Ionization energies are increasing. So, do we have evidence for the increasing ionization energies across a period using the concept of energy levels? Well, let's just consider this. So, across a period, what we have is increasing nuclear charge. So, we're increasing the number of protons in the nucleus. So, that's one thing that we need to consider. The other thing that we need to consider is where the electrons are. Well, as we go across the period, the electrons, of course, are in the same energy level. That's our theory. And if they are in the same energy level, they are the same distance from the nucleus. Now, what does that mean, therefore, in terms of attraction of those electrons by the nucleus? It's going to increase. As we increase the number of protons going across the uh, period, we'll increase the attraction between those electrons and the nucleus. So we can explain increasing ionization energy across the period by considering the number of protons in the nucleus and the number of electrons in the same energy level. But what about down a group? Now here you will notice the ionization energies decrease going down the group. It doesn't really matter which group that you take. You can take helium, neon, argon as the noble gases, or you can take sodium, uh, sorry, lithium, sodium and potassium. In all cases, group 1, 2, 3, 4 or wherever, you will find that ionization energies decrease down the group. Now can we again use our theory of energy levels to explain this? Well, think about what happens. Going down a group, again we're getting increasing nuclear charge, uh, increasing number of protons. Sometimes we're increasing by uh, 8 protons or more as we go down. But what about the electrons? Where are they? Well, the electrons are further away from the nucleus each time because they're in uh, shells or energy levels that are further from the nucleus. And that means that we have inner shell electrons which are shielding the charge, the nuclear charge, from those outer shell electrons. And therefore, what we find is less energy needed to remove the electrons from that outermost shell and therefore lower ionization energy. So again, our theories are supported by evidence from ionization energies. But is that the whole story? As you can probably guess, no.